Intelligent Transaction Matching in NetSuite is an important tool for accountants. On this video, I'm going to show you two different set of rules that run in your account. Stay tuned. Intelligent Transaction Matching in NetSuite runs two different set of rules. First one is System Rules. And the second one is User Rules. System Rules are the first set of rules that NetSuite will always try to run in your system. They are the default set of rules in your system and they cannot be modified. User rules are the ones that we create and they give us more flexibility when it comes to matching. NetSuite will try to run system rules first. If it cannot find transactions to match using this set of rules, then it will try to run user rules, okay? Now let's see how system rules work. In this set, NetSuite will try to run these transactions in this order. First, match on transaction number and amount. The second one is basically the same as the first one. The only difference is when it comes to transaction number, NetSuite will try to ignore prefixes and leading zeros, okay? And the third one is an interesting one because NetSuite will try to match based on amount and date. If the transaction's date falls within the 90-day period, NetSuite will match it, okay? Now, let's go over to the match screen because I have two examples here. We have two separate transactions one for $15 and one for $25. We can see the transaction numbers here and the corresponding date. First, let's focus on this one, transaction number one, two, three. The amount is $15. And again, the transaction number is one, two, three. If we go to the bank transactions that I will be importing, we can see these first two rows, they have the same transaction number, one, two, three. And if you sum their amounts, in other words, these two lines here match our $15 transaction in NetSuite. When it comes to system rules, NetSuite can do one too many matching, okay? NetSuite will try to match these two rows that represent the transaction number one, two, three for $15 with this NetSuite transaction, okay? Now the other one is the, now the other one is a little bit different. We can see that we have two transactions for $25, one in NetSuite and one in the bank, but look at their date. This one is for April 1st. In NetSuite, we have this one for January 15th. Now assume that you wrote a check to a vendor in January for $25. Sometimes vendors, for some reason, sometimes vendors for various reasons, can will cash the check in later dates. In this case, the vendor, in this case, the vendor actually cashed the check. In this case, the vendor actually cashed the check in April 1st. Okay. So the date, so the next week date, even though it's on April 1st, next week will try to match it because Again, let's go back to the reconciliation rules. We can see that the date falls within the 90 days period. Okay, now let's see how this works. I will upload a file that represents the bank transactions. And if I refresh this, I'm supposed to see NetSuite performing those matches. If I go to this tab right here, review, I will see those matches. 
this line here represents the first transaction that NetSuite match, the first rule, match based on transaction and date. Match based on transaction number and amount. You can see here, transaction number from the bank, one, two, three, fifteen dollars net suite transaction number one two three fifteen dollars the other one you can see that bank state is april 1st amount is 25 dollars net suite state is january 15th and the amount is 25 dollars and that is how system rules work on my next video i'm going to discuss how user rules work their advantages how they differ from system rules and how we can leverage them for our bank import automation. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want to stay up to date on NetSuite accounting concepts, please hit that subscribe button and visit us at our website at www.fusiontaxes.com.